Okay, we are recording. Um, <laughs> I just want to introduce our big friend. Uh, he already uh, presented at both uh, North Boston Azure and Boston Azure user groups in person and virtually. Um, Tayo Bali, he is a Microsoft Data Platform MVP. He's also a Data Solutions Architect. He is a public speaker um, and just amazing person. Um, so I just want to uh, introduce him and uh, pass the virtual mic to him. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Veronica and Bill for you know inviting me again. Uh, this has been few times that I spoke to the combined group and also your group in NARD and also Jason's group uh, in uh, Burlington. So uh, thanks to everybody, those who joined, uh, because you know things are a little bit difficult for everyone, right? You know, uh, working remote, children are home, uh, what not right and then after working a whole day and then you know uh, spending an evening uh, to listening to me it's not a you know easy thing to commit so i admire your uh, you know your dedication and uh, so i'm going to uh, shut down the camera uh, for now and i'll bring it back uh, for q and a uh, so you know it's a small group so uh, uh, you know, I'm re I'm not monitoring the chat actively, so Veronica can stop me anytime. Uh, if uh, it is okay, you can unmute, ask me a question. I'm I'm okay with it. Uh, you know, I'm not too too formal, or I don't need to be. And um, I also noticed that the next month's speaker, uh, Hassan, uh, I met him a few times. He actually came to speak at Boston SQL Saturday. I was in Ohio uh, before the pandemic. Uh, awesome speaker. So you want to sign up. Uh, you know, for the next month's meeting uh, for this uh, for this group. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, the, I only have few slides. Uh, most of it, uh, probably 80 to 85 percent will be demo. And, um, you know, my goal is not to really teach you how to write uh, KQL, uh, because uh, if you are familiar with, you know, I know some of you personally, you are way better developer than me. Uh, so, if you know T-SQL or some other programming language, Kusto is a very easy language to understand. I will try to show you some bells and whistles so you can appreciate that, uh, as Bill was saying, you know, how the Azure business is expanding worldwide, um, you know, and Bill was just saying that, you know, average $25,000 spend uh, can get to that limit, and I'm, I know at least my company is using many fold more than that. So, it's going to just grow. Uh, and as you are expanding, right, you know, um, you need to monitor your resources. And and for me, that was the reason that, you know, I, I, I started looking at it. So I'll try to, you know, show you a couple of things that you can take all this uh, and hopefully put it into use. And and I'll also show you if you really, you know, do not know anything about this language, I'll also try to show you a couple of, um, you know, uh, sources uh, or resource and a couple of just basic syntax that where uh, you can start and, and build up uh, you know, learning this language. Uh, so let's let's move on. Not sure if it's just me, but are you um, uh, sharing your screen? I'm probably not. So that's a good point. Thank you, Bill. So just give me a minute. Should be. Go there, show a screen. Why it's not giving me that option now? Oh, okay, I got it. So, screen two should be able to see it now. Yes. Okay, great. Yes, good. Great. Thank you, Bill, uh, for reminding me. Um, so, as again, you know, I'm not going to read about myself. Uh, if you just take a note on the things on the left side. Uh, uh, you can contact me if you know any question, comments, uh, any feedback after this event. Uh, you can use any of this uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, email, um, a contact page from my blog post. Uh, please do contact me and I'm, I'm, I'll always respond, you know, um, hopefully within two days, uh, but you are I'll guarantee that, you know, you will get a response. And if I don't know, that's OK. You know, uh, I know people are smarter than me, um, so that's a good thing. 
I can go back, uh, you know, I can go to them with your questions and get a feedback and and, and send it to you. Uh, so, you know, the, the, at least I can do that. So if I don't know the answer. So let's uh, just talk about a little bit, you know, what is this this Custo, right? And, and where it came from. Um, so Custo, it's a it's a language. Also, there's a Custo engine. So don't get confused with these two things. The name can be confusing. Um, one thing of the bet is uh, whatever you're going to use Custo for, it's going to be only read only. So it's a read only request. Um, and the, we look at the schema a little bit. It also follow a hierarchy. Uh, it's all column store index uh, pre indexed for you. And the goal is to when you have huge amount of data, terabytes or petabytes, how you can quickly get uh, insight out of it, right? That was kind of the primary need of Microsoft in 2014. Um, uh, you know, when Azure was, you know, expanding, they were building big data centers. So Microsoft had to internally monitor all their resources, right? All the hardware, all the cooling power and whatnot. So they had this challenge, right? They're collecting all these logs, metrics. What do they do with this? How do they quickly know in real time what's happening? So, you know, Microsoft has r and facility big in Israel, and uh, it was actually a grassroots uh, project incubation project in Israel uh, into the R&D center and from there you know they came up with this language again to fast and scalable log uh, you know to get the telemetry analytics and in 2016 this became the back end for application insight I personally do not work with application insights uh, there are a team in my company where I work full time. Um, uh, they do use it. I know that for sure. And in 2018, um, it was in public preview, uh, was announced in the uh, Ignite in 2018, and in 2019, uh, in February in the Ignite, uh, it it became GA. And so there are two things. Um, I do not personally use there is a service called Azure Data Explorer. That's a total uh, full place service that you can use. You can dump your data into that into that service and you can use Custo Query language to extract data from there. Uh, you can do that and I'll show you some of that. Uh, what I use primarily is against log analytics workspace and uh, we'll talk about that also a little bit that how I use it and why do I use it. So I just took it uh, from Microsoft documentation. I put the URL on the right side, just so you know that you know I did not make this slide by myself. So you know I've been doing this, uh, you know, working with SQL Server for a while, and I had pretty good grasp on for my on-prem infrastructure. Um, I knew if any server goes down, any host goes down, uh, anything out of ordinary CPU memory, you know, number of batches per second, queries, whatnot. But as I started, you know, moving stuff to cloud, primarily into Azure SQL database, um, I needed something similar, right? I want to know when things are out of ordinary. And I also wanted to do one thing is, you know, today I might be having, I'm not going to give you exact number, you know, say smaller number of resources on prem. Uh, uh, sorry, in the cloud, but down the road, if I have hundreds and hundreds of those, right? Azure SQL database, managed instance, Azure Synapse, whatnot. How do I scale this thing out, right? How do I not, you know, keep doing the same thing over and over, right? I wanted to set this up one time, make sure I can scale it out, and doesn't matter how many of those resources I have, you know, it should do the same for me. So I looked at a couple of things. Uh, you know, I looked at you know a couple of solutions. Uh, you know, writing PowerShell uh, into notebooks uh, and, and all that. And at the end, I figured out, for me at least, uh, log analytics workspace, which you see here on the right side under the analyze uh, you know blade, uh, that worked you know best for me. So out of you know Azure Synapse, Azure SQL Server, or pretty much any kind of Azure resource, because you know I gave this talk internally at my company uh, for folks to, uh, for network folks to manage their switches and routers and all that, right? 
um, and, 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 and other groups because they all can send their metrics and logs to log analytics workspace. Uh, and what does that do for you? Once you have that, Microsoft already has predefined schema for all kind of resources. And nowadays, actually, you can um, install agent and send your own premise uh, resources, logs and metrics also to log analytics workspace. So it's all in one place. And Azure Monitor actually work on top of that. And from there, uh, you can do whatever you want. Like in my case, we use ServiceNow. And yeah, I know, you know, Bill was talking about like Bill has a team in India and there's, you know, Shikan joined from South India. Uh, I also have an offshore team in Pune and they're 24 by 7, so I use service now. So from log analytics workspace, I can write custom query language and whatever I want to get alerted on, I can send a call to the service now and generate a ticket and it will land into their into the ticket queue. And there are other stuff you can do. You can use webhooks. Uh, you can send a phone call. You can send pager. Uh, you can send notification to your Teams um, uh, app also. And you know, if you're just using metrics, uh, you know, metrics is some uh, we call this like uh, it's a you know single time and a single metrics, right? And Microsoft also, you know, in Azure you have Metric Explorer, they will do it for you. But if you have to do it for each resource individually, like for each Azure SQL database, you go and have to do this over and over, which you don't want to, right? You just want to send everything in one place and um, you know, query from there. Now, is it the only destination? No, you can send your metrics and log analytics uh, logs to a storage account. You can also send it to Event Hub. Um, and it's actually recommended if you need to keep this for a longer period, don't use log analytics, send it to a storage account. It will be a lot cheaper. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can keep whatever you need to, you know, to look at your trend and, and alert, send those to log analytics. Uh, one other thing is Microsoft also has built in solutions. So if you see on the on, on, under the insights blade on the top right side, there's something called additional solutions. So these solutions are built in. So if I'm sending C Azure SQL data to log analytics, I can enable those solutions, turn it on. I don't have to do anything. And behind the scene, Microsoft is going to aggregate all data and uh, you know graph it for me, and I can drill down and find my problems very quickly. Um, if you don't want to write any query, uh, you can have all these built-in solutions, but if you want to go more granular and more specific uh, alerts, like dynamic alerts, right? I don't want to know when CPU is 90%. I want to know if CPU is more than X number of percent compared to the last week at the same time, right? Week by week, day by day. You can do all those with custom query language and get alerted. So that's the one of the reasons that I started looking at this. Uh, you know, these are a couple of other things that you know you can use with Security Center, uh, Application Inside, Windows Defender. I talked about it. So, uh, you know, everywhere, pretty much every Azure resource, uh, you can use this. So now, you know, folks like me who came from a database background, we've been working with T-SQL. I'm like, um, you know, okay, now you you know, do I have to learn another language, right? Uh, why can't I use T-SQL? So, if you are using Azure Data Explorer, there is certain things you can do with T-SQL, though it's not recommended, but with Azure Monitor, you cannot. Uh, you really cannot do anything with T-SQL, so you have to uh, use custom query language, and this is uh, a quote from Microsoft documentation, and I kind of highlighted that, you know, Microsoft also recommend, even if you use Data Explorer, uh, um, use use custom instead of T-SQL. Uh, where can I learn, or how can I learn? Um, so go to my reference slide at the end, and there are three different demo environments. Uh, I'm going to use the top one today and I'm going to use another one that I'll show you. So these demo um, data collections are happening around the clock. So Microsoft actually pushing data to these demo, um, uh, you know, like uh, data stores continuously as a, uh, um, you know, for demo purpose. So if you just have a portal account, you do not need to spend any money. Uh, you can log into this and uh, you can start writing uh, lang you know, uh, queries and I'll show you that. And there are also some of the queries are saved for you, so you can go and look at those and start from there. Uh, recently, you know, I use um, Azure Data Studio a lot. Uh, if you do not know, this is a cross-platform tool. Um, uh, I wouldn't say similar to Management Studio, it's a lot richer, but in certain extent, it's not as rich as Man Management Studio when it comes to purely SQL Server. Uh, so with Azure Studio, it's a extension base. Uh, we use it a lot. You can uh, use uh, you know different uh, languages. 
and now actually there are menus that you can switch between Management Studio and Azure Data Explorer. So there has been two things being released uh, recently. Um, the the top one, uh, you know, uh, is called KQL Magic. This is really not extension. This is a kind of uh, it's an extension of Python kernel uh, that once you enable it, and I'll show you this in demo. Uh, it gets you all the modules that you need, and then you can actually uh, write a Python a notebook uh, using Kustu query language. So, um, and, and I'll show you some of the examples how you can do it. And the bottom one is actually a pure extension in Azure uh, Data Studio that Microsoft released. This will, um, and, and with this, you can also, you can have just a pure KQL uh, uh, notebook using Kustu kernel within Azure Data Studio. And uh, today it's primarily done for Azure Data Explorer. Uh, but I will also show you a workaround that how you can connect to your directly to your log analytics workspace. It's not pretty, uh, but uh, you know there is a uh, someone at Microsoft that I uh, I talk uh, Julie, uh, she's in that team. I talk to her all the time. I was talking to her this morning. Um, you know it's it's in the pipeline. It's not in NDA or anything. I'm not giving you any uh, inside scoop. But very soon, you know there will be native uh, connect connectivity to directly to log analytics workspace. And then you will be able to, you know, pull your data and bring it to Azure Data Studio and do more, uh, you know, built-in visualization with the. There is another extension called uh, Sandance, um, uh, which you can download. So you can, you know, get these KQL queries, run those, and and you know, uh, produce graph within Azure Data Studio. Uh, you know, very powerful. So those are some of the stuff in the pipeline and coming. Uh, these are, you know, I put bunch of references. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this. Only one thing, the, the second bullet point uh, is a gentleman called Robert, Robert Kane. Um, he has a four hour plural site course on Kustu query language, and this was actually um, sponsored by most probably Microsoft. So even if you do not have a paid account, if you just have an account in um, plural site, uh, they have a bunch of courses that you really do not have to have a, a, a paid account uh, because other companies sponsor those. Um, um, courses. Uh, so this is one of those. So you can do it. Uh, you do not have to you know, pay anything. Uh, this is a nice course if you really want to uh, get into the syntax from very basic to advanced level. I would highly recommend and some other stuff that I read uh, in preparation for this course or uh, you know, over you know, whenever I use it. And uh, that's all I have. So I'm going to go to demo. Uh, I'll primarily be using portal Azure SQL database and Azure Data Studio. This is the version I'm going to use. And so I'm just going to take a pause and see if any. Questions, comments at this time before I switch to demo. I don't see any comments in the chat, but if anyone has a question, feel free to unmute yourself. OK, so I'm going to move on. If if someone has anything, please, uh, you know, speak up or uh, I'm also watching the chat. So so let's move on. Uh, I'm not going to. Run this script right now. The reason I'm running, you know, uh, there's no reason for you to sit down here and watch me running this. It takes about five to eight minutes. Uh, I already uploaded this uh, in my GitHub repo, which I'll show you. And what it does. I'll show you in portal what it did for us and then I'll. Uh, um, let me bring this so running that script. Created some of these resources, so let me go back to dashboard. Uh, it created a Azure SQL Server, which is just a logical container uh, and a sample Azure SQL database and a log analytics workspace. That's all was done from that script that I showed you. And also I did something within the log analytics workspace. But before I go there, I want to show you something else. So whenever I deploy a Azure SQL database um, in production, um, you know, I do a bunch of things at my work, but I'm not going to show you all those. I'm just um, going to show you just for the sake of this. So as you can see here, I'm under the diagnostics 
it is saying that I already have this set up and it is going to this log analytics workspace. So if I go to edit settings, um, as I said, you have three options. You can send it to log analytics, storage account, event hub, and I'm sending all these logs. Now, do you need to send all this? I don't know. It's up to you, right? You have to decide, you know, what do you want to collect? What do you want to, you know, monitor? What do you want to um, alert on? But just for demo purpose, you know, I'm sending all this to this log analytics workspace. Now, let me close this. I'm not sure if I have another. Yep. Okay. Now, over here, if I go to logs, so all this data is being fed it and it's being, you know, automatically uh, it's being loaded into this tables. And if I have, you know, other kind of data that, um, you know, I keep sending. Uh, I do not have to do any of this here. It will automatically get sorted out, predefined uh, schema. It will get loaded. It will get indexed and all that for me to to run queries. Now, one thing I'm going to show you just for demo purpose. What I did here, I have one alert enabled. I call it found deadlock alert, and you know this is a very simple. I'm just trying to give you a concept as I said before, and you can you know take it as much you know as far as you want and as complex as you need. So what I'm saying here that if I have a metric named deadlock, if the count is greater than zero, trigger this alert. And you know, I know I have an overlap here. I'm saying you know, check for last 30 minutes, but I'm running this every 15 minutes, means I'm gonna get two alerts for same one. I get that, but I'm just doing it. You know, just picked up some numbers here. And there's something called action group. So I have action group called notify DBA deadlock. This is going to send an email, SMS, and a voice call. Now, you know, do I want to get call at the middle of the night for every deadlock? Probably no. Um, you know, again, I said, you know, you have to decide this for yourself. Uh, I have a subject line for email and, you know, I have a description. I put a CVAD3 here. What does this CVAD mean? It really doesn't mean anything in this case. But there are some apps that I know, like I was just talking about ServiceNow. You can create template in ServiceNow and you can look for text. So if it says that, okay, it's coming with the CBAD3 text, then I'm going to do this. I'm just going to send the email. If I'm coming with the CBAD1, I'm going to page someone. If I'm coming with CBAD2, uh, probably I'm going to do this. So, you know, just an example. So now I have this setup, right? So I don't need to save it because it's all said before. Now let's do a deadlock, you know, create a deadlock just for demo purpose and see what happened. Okay, so I should have a, what happened to my, Okay. Similar deadlock. And I'm doing this against uh, this demo server that you saw on the dashboard that I just created uh, on, on against that demo database. Uh, so before I do this, let me make sure I connect to this. This is Azure SQL database. And in Azure, uh, you cannot use the statement use database name, so you always have to be in the right context of the database with Azure SQL. So, and this is a very you know um, simple uh, that if you if you you know Google online how to create a deadlock, you will see this probably thousands of examples. So I'm just creating two tables and. Just having two rows of data. And this is a common trick that you can do. You use, do a big entrant. You're beginning a transaction, you're not 
committing or anything. You leave this open, go to another window. Oops, sorry, I didn't remain that. We'll run this here. This will keep running. I'm going to come here, and now one of those should get deadlocked. Yep, so as you see now, a deadlock happened, right? So within five or seven minutes, I kept my phone purposely on. Uh, it should ring. I'll also get an SMS. I'll get an email. Um, I'll, I'll show you uh, once we get those, uh, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to move on. So this is a, a very, you know, quick example, but what I wanted to show you is that now I have this alert set up, right? for this condition. As you saw that I didn't have a server name there or a database name, right? It's going to do for everything. Um, now, you know, this is probably not production ready, right? If you have, you know, a different tier of applications, you might want to group those and do it in a different way. You might have different log analytics workspace for different tier and based on that, you can decide how you want to do it. So you can take this concept and now, you know, write your queries and get alerted for anything you want to. Uh, and get notified in any way you want. Like that was kind of my my goal of showing this. That you can, you know, this is very, you know, scalable. Uh, you know, doesn't matter how many resources you are you are monitoring. So I'm just going to close all this. We don't need any more. Uh, so this is script is there. Um, you know, it will do everything for you. There is only one place. Uh, that you want to make sure that the one in the GitHub, uh, I didn't put my, of course, my phone number and my email address. You want to change that uh, when you otherwise uh, you can pretty much run this as is. Uh, one other place you need to be careful is your subscription ID that I have no idea. And then at the end, I have this one line code that's going to clean up. So if you want to save your money, make sure you delete this because I build everything in one resource group. So it's a very easy to clean up. So there are two things that I talked about. KQL magic. Uh, and these are also uh, in, in the GitHub repo you can you can uh, download. So I actually downloaded this from here. I didn't change much. As you can see, this is still using a Python uh, kernel and this is first time when you do this, you need to install KQL magic. Um, and if you already have it installed, uh, you can always run this. If there's a newer version to upgrade, you can do that. And then you load this into this uh, notebook. And then once you're done, now I can actually connect to a uh, Azure Data Explorer. Uh, I can give the tenant name, cluster name, and the database name. And I need to do that authentication. So Okay. Right, so you're connected now. And now, because I'm in a Python kernel, I can say, you know, person person KQL, that it knows that I'm using KQL. I can directly query the data here. And if you have the other extension, send ends, uh, you can also. Uh, put this, you know, in 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 graph format, uh, and and we'll, we'll we'll see some of this. Or you can directly do this here. If you say render time chart, uh, so we're looking at a storm event, uh, you know, summarized by count, and you can create a time chart right here. Uh, you can do a pie chart by looking at the same, you know, similar data. 
Now, as I said, I personally do not work with Azure Data Explorer. Um, uh, sorry, I do not use uh, you know the the, the, the service. Uh, I mostly use with the you know the the, the log analytics workspace. So. Uh, this is another one like you know I was telling you about this this demo you know, workspace in my slide. Uh, you can connect through this. Um, you know you same workspace um, application key and then the alias. I'm not going to run this, but you can do that. Now you can also connect to the log analytics workspace directly. Uh, this was a little bit tricky. Microsoft documentation was not very clear. Uh, so I put a URL here. There is a um, gentleman named Dennis. Uh, he's a Microsoft MVP. Uh, he wrote uh, extensively uh, how to get this work. Uh, and so there are a couple of different ways. I'm not going to use this one because you know I have to uh, create secret and uh, change bunch of things. So I don't want to. But if you go to this uh, article, uh, it will explain and then you can take this string that I have and you can just change the values and get it work. Uh, but there is another way you can you can do this as I'm doing it right here. Now this is directly connecting to the log analytics workspace that you saw in the portal that I, I created. OK, so you're connected now. And now I'm actually running this. Against. This uh, this log analytics workspace, the one that I created. Not the Microsoft's demo or anything. It's, it's directly getting the data. I'm not sure yet if the deadlock. Uh, Landed there or no? Probably not yet, but we can try another query. Let me. Let me bring that one in. Can also look at from the metrics if you don't see it in diagnostics. It land in two different places. Um, yep. So twelve, Yep, this one. So this is the one we just did, right? So uh, it's there. Uh, I also, uh, you know, there were some more um, URLs that if you want to, you know, read further and do some more stuff, you can do that. Uh, the next notebook, it's a little bit about this is now not using a Python kernel. You can directly go and use Custa. And for this one, what it's using, it's using this extension called KQL. Uh, this is still in preview, uh, just so you know. Now with this one, I can directly connect to a cluster from here. And once I'm connected, uh, then it's, and as you see here, I do not have any person person KQL. Um, um, because now I'm in a Kustu kernel, so I can directly write in Kustu query language. There's another one. Now, these are, as you see, I'm connecting to a sample from Microsoft right now. How can I connect to the uh, log analytics workspace and query the way I showed it in the other place? Uh, it's very messy. Uh, if I take this. I wish I could just copy. I hope, am I copying this? Just give me a minute. So let me see if I can put in a notepad and show you the whole thing. No, 
it is not. Control Shift N, copy. So as you hear my phone ringing, this is actually uh, about the deadlock. I also got a text message and I'm going to also try to show you the email. So anyway, uh, so this is not pretty. You have to you know, create this whole string and then you have to put your query at the end. Um, but again, you know, this has been still in preview. So Microsoft is actively actually building on this and I, uh, I think this is going to go away and you should be able to, um, you know, go to your connection string um, window and be able to connect to your log analytics workspace uh, pretty quickly. I mean, this works, but you know, you're not going to for every query. You don't want to, you know, copy the whole thing and put your query at the end. As you can see that we can get results, uh, but it's still it's not a, you know, I don't think so. It's ready for, you know, for for prime time yet. Um, I want to show you that email that I received, so let me get it in the different window and then because it's my personal email address, so just give me a minute. So you got a, I got an email from that from that deadlock, and I just want to show you that. Uh, so you know, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but as you can see, CB83. This is the UTC interval 30 minute, and it actually gives you the, you know, uh, the whole details uh, about the, you know. The resources that was uh, involved into the deadlock. Uh, so I just wanted to. Okay, so any questions so far? Otherwise, I'm just going to go and uh, show you a couple of syntaxes and uh, you know run a few things. Okay, so someone has a question: the pricing model for queries against log analytics workspace. I think on my resource page I have a URL uh, because I don't remember every time um, you know there is a, uh, how much it costs and, and all that. Uh, there's definitely a price. Uh, uh, also in your log analytics workspace, if you are keeping um, over it, you know, when it first came out, you could not keep anything older than 30 days. It will automatically get parched. Now you can uh, actually customize uh, what things you want to keep for how long? Um, and I think there is a certain gigs are free per log analytics workspace. And after that, you have to pay per gig and for, uh, you know, uh, for the period that you keep it. Um, so you have to, you know, the, the more you keep and um, the longer you keep, you pay more money. Also, the queries. So, uh, OK, so I have. Let me show you this. Um, I have the six queries. Um, I wrote those uh, using Visual Studio Code just so you know it gives me all the syntax error and all that, but uh, you can open this in pretty much any place. I am not going to. You know, go through everything, but they are also in my GitHub repo. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things out of these six queries, but not not every operator uh, because it's just going to get too boring. And like I said at the beginning, some of you are way better developer than me, so I don't need to teach you every syntax of of this of this language. Um, the first one, I'm not uh, as I said, I'm using uh, one of those demo data collections to show you this, but this is pretty much same as what you see in the portal. So, you know, the, the look and feel is pretty same. So I just want you to, you know, I'm just going to show you a couple of things to get around in the portal when you go into log analytics workspace. So on the left, you see your collections as you, as I said a few times, these are all predefined, right? And I'm speaking very loosely. You can consider each one of these as a database. These are your tables. Within the tables, these are your columns. Right? It's, it's kind of a, have a hierarchy, uh, same as a relational database. 
on the left side, you see the symbols telling you the data type. Right. And on each one of these, even without knowing anything. If you click this, it gives you a preview of your data. And you can also click this and it will take the query. Show you what query was ran behind the scene to give you this data. Also gives you some ideas, right? What is this collection about, right? It's about virtual machines. And this data is also being used by built-in solutions uh, for Azure Monitor for VM. So if you open that solution, that solution actually used some data from this table. So, you know, give you some ideas. One thing I'll probably mention a few times. If you just run this, or if you see both of my queries, I do not have any predicate with date time. Right? For how long I'm looking at, like how far back I'm going. Be careful with it, especially if you're doing aggregation. Uh, you might get caught with this. I did a few times. By default, it will always show you 24 hours, last 24 hours for everything. If you need to do a count, you do some aggregation always for last 24 hours. And by default, it only gives you the fir first 10,000 records. So just keep these two things in mind. Last 24 hours and 10,000 records. There is a Query Explorer, if you want to save your queries and share with your teams, you can use this. Uh, under the saved queries, if you go to Pura's site, the course that I was talking to you, I was telling you before by uh, Robert Kane, all of his queries from that Pura site is bundled here. So you do not have to even you know, start from scratch. You can just open this. And you start running those and you know, see how he did this. And if you go step by step from M1 to M8, he goes from very basic and build some complex queries. So this is a good place uh, for you if you want to get started. Uh, it also gives you some link for getting started online courses and all that. And what else I can tell you? OK, so let's 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 look at a few things. And please, I'm also monitoring the chat, so if you have uh, any question, you know, like I said, you're a small group, so please stop me. Uh, because from here, everything is available for you, so I do not have to kill myself or kill yourself, you know, make you bored with, you know, to, to get this finished. So the main purpose of this, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger and press F11 so you get a little bit more real estate. Uh, one thing, primarily we will be using this to search stuff, right? Uh, as I said, these are all read-only queries. We want to find this stuff, it means we'll be searching. Now, I'll start with something negative. You know, you might not like me for that, so do not do this. As I said, you know, do not run this. Saying that search CPU means go to every database, every table, every column, all rows, and find this CPU case insensitive, right? So not, not a good thing for you to do. Uh, if you have large collection, it might take some you know, longer time. Plus, you'll be probably paying for some compute. This one I'm restricting, right? Now I'm saying, just look at this uh, table as your metrics. Again, I'm looking at all columns, case insensitive. Uh, sorry, case, yes, case insensitive. If I want it to be case sensitive, I need to mention this, that I want a case sensitive search. Now this is a, finally, I'm restricting myself now. I'm saying within Azure metrics, look at the column name, named metric name and give me this. Again, I'll mention that as you see here, showing the first 10,000, which I told you it will always do that. And time range is last 24 hours. Uh, I can do exact search with equal equal. I can search for two different things. 
with the end operator. Now this is first time I'm saying, as you can see a time generated. And notice this, as soon as I click here, uh, Bill, is that a comment for me or? No, so someone else. Search Sorry, for. yeah, it was. Uh, it, it seemed like it might be. So Jim O'Neill was one who asked the question about the pricing, and that one seemed to be uh, pricing related. Uh, if it has to do with CPU credits, but I'm, I'm not okay. ac actually sure. Yeah. Um, no, I was just. I, I didn't mean that. I was just searching, you know, just to show exact search. So. Um, if you see that, you know, if I come here, see this automatically sends that is last 24 hours here. Now you can see that it changed to set inquiry, right? Now here I'm saying that just give me for last one hour, right? And it says that my time range is set in, in the query. But again, within the last one hour, I have more than 10,000 records and it's going to only show me the first 10,000. I can do a where and and one thing is unusual here. Oh, it's giving me that alert again. So let me just mute my phone so I don't get OK. You can use three wire class. This is something uh, you know, I don't know many um, programming language. Uh, you know, some of you probably know a lot more than me. I'm primarily a T SQL based and a little bit of C sharp, but uh, in T SQL I cannot have this. This will give me a syntax error. I cannot have three wire clauses, but here you can do that or you can replace this by end. Uh, both works. And they are all, you see, as you can see, it's pipeline. So it's going to take this, reduce this, then reduce, then reduce. So it's always better uh, if you have a, if you're restricting it by time, I would put that at the top. So reducing your set, uh, like, you know, if you work with SQL Server, I'm sorry to bring, you know, SQL Server example, that's what I work most. If you're looking at a uh, execution plan, you always try to reduce your data set at the beginning of the query, right? On the right side of the plan. So the rest of the plan has to work with a smaller data set. You don't want to work with millions of set and at the end, um, you know, put a filter that, uh, you know, reduce the set from 1 million to 1,000, right? You want to, if you can do it at the beginning of the query, that's better. So here is the same deal. If you're resting with time range, uh, you know, you want to do it first. I, I don't know if you bring it down, you know, someone asked me, uh, is it clever enough to do that before, right? Um, I, you know, these things doesn't have any query plan or stuff I cannot see behind the scenes, so I really don't know. If it was SQL Server, I could tell you exactly what's the order of the operation, but uh, here I do not have that inside yet. Uh, this is a syntax that you can use if you're searching in the, all the columns. Uh, there is some support for uh, uh, regular expressions. I just wanted to mention that, so you can run this and see that, you know, you can use it. Uh, take and limit is synonym, so it's just a, you know, just give me the top 10. Um, keep in mind, we always alert people when you're using top statement without order by, uh, you have no guarantee. Um, though you keep seeing the same result set, uh, sometimes people think that, uh, you know, there is order, it's really not. It's just bringing it, you know, what's in the memory. Uh, it's serving you the same data because that page is already in the memory, but there is really no order. It's just a random 10. Uh, you can have a bunch of wire clauses, and then at the end, you can just, I want to just see top 10. Uh, count, obvious, is going to count it. Uh, you can again combine count with other predicates, obvious. Summarize, this is pretty much what we call in SQL, T-SQL or, or SQL is a group by. So I can do a count group by metric name. And I can also, as you can see, this column name is not very friendly. Uh, it's count underscore. I can give it a friendly name if I want to. Uh, that also works now, count by metric name. Uh, I can group by with multiple columns. I can also have an aggregate function. So I do have a group by here, but I'm also using a max value. So for each one, do a count. Also give me the maximum value for each bucket. 
as an extra column, I can do that. I like this one, bin. It does a group by, but then it also slices it, you know, based on what I'm passing here. So what I mean by that, here I'm saying, you know, do this per day. Now, if I'm trying to troubleshoot this something, you know, so like per hour, so when did this thing change? Now it's going to give me per hour, and then I can, uh, you know, put this in a chart, right? And if I see a deviation, probably will tell me when things start going wrong. And, you know, if I do not like this, I'm not sure the minute is the right syntax, probably M. I can slice and dice it every 15 minute, chart it, go to more granular, right? As you can see, you can see a pattern here probably. So Bean is a very, you know, uh, powerful for troubleshooting. Uh, I can also have calculated columns. Here I'm saying, you know, give me the headroom total minus average. Um, so 312 is kind of weird for, um, you know, for, for, for a CPU. I don't know, it's because probably like it has four core. Uh, that, that's a possibility. I'm really not sure. Uh, you can do projects. So what does that mean? Like, you know, we always say, uh, you know, do not use select star right because if your schema change behind the scene, you don't know. Always put your column names. Uh, here's something. So there are a bunch of columns that, by default, whenever you're looking at any collections, it gives you certain columns, but there are a lot more columns. Uh, and if you do not want to, uh, you know, if you do not want the default ones, you want some particular ones, you can just say, give me these column names. Means it's basically saying select this, this, this column name from this collection. So it's just going to give you those column names. And you can combine project, uh, you know, uh, with a calculated column and give it a, you know, uh, your, your own name. And what I'm showing here is, even though I'm using a calculated column here with headroom, total and average, <coughs> it shows total average and my uh, headroom, right? So if I go to the right, uh, I'm showing total average and also headroom. But if I say I do not want to see total and average, I just want to see headroom so I can bring this up. And in my project, I just have headroom, not the total and average, and I can do that. There's something on project away, which is very interesting that uh, that 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 uh, T-SQL doesn't have something like this. Uh, what it does, it's saying, give me all the columns except this. Uh, so I don't know a equivalent, you know, I haven't seen one, uh, which is which is new to me. So project AO is saying, give me all columns except this. Uh, distinct, I'm not going to run this. It's uh, similar to any other language. Just give me the distinct values. Uh, you can do a sample distinct. So this is like no order. Uh, just give me random 10 distinct values out of this collection. Uh, you can do this in T-SQL, uh, but it's just two different uh, keyword or two different operators. But here, um, you know, they have a built-in one. Uh, OK, this is a top 20 by now I have a, you know, order. So it means I'm going to get, you know, definite result, right? Um, it's, it's like deterministic, not 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 random. Uh, sort same, you know, very obvious. Now. One thing you will see this with this collections, a lot of time. Uh, there will be columns with JSON. There will be columns with XML. Uh, there'll be columns in different format, and some of those uh, are not, you know, pretty to look at or pretty to query on, right? Or when you are sending your alert uh, to the person uh, who is looking at the alert, if you send like a whole big XML uh, or, or, or a JSON, uh, probably not very useful to them. So you can parse some of those data. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples here. Uh, no, this is this is not doing that. So yeah, okay. So parse number one. I wrote two of this because recently I've been noticing that Microsoft is not sending data to the event 
collection. Yeah, there's no data there, so I, it is stopped recently. So I just wrote something and I know I'm getting ahead. I did not explain what is let. Let is pretty much uh, declaring a variable uh, type, you know, table, one column with the string data type. Um, I have a couple of other example how to use let, uh, but for this one, as you can see, I'm putting all this, you know, key value pairs, right? Uh, adding those into this column, but then I don't want to send this data like this, and I want to, you know, pivot this or or, or twist it to a to a column and 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 you know put those values there, and there I can use parse, and then I can project those names. So if I run this, uh, you know, it will be more clear. As you can see here now. I have resource name, total slice, slice number. I have this in each column, and now I can, you know, have further query if I want to look, you know, if I'm looking for anything that I want to alert on. You can do that. Uh, between, um, I wrote this one interesting because they also have a, you know, I don't know if not between is a typical syntax, but here you can use this symbol and say. You know, I want to between this and I do not want between this. So, uh, too dynamic. If you have a JSON uh, column type, uh, you can use too dynamic and you can only extract the key value pairs that you want. So, look at this column extended property, right? So, if we just run this, and try to right here extended property as you can see right i have this compromised host username and all this and i do not want you know all of this data i just want to get resource type service id i just want to get this four alert name and time generator so i can get this by two dynamic uh, and I put this into a, in an array and then I can get those, the one that I want. I can extract those. And now I'm getting only those key value pairs that I want in a column. Um, it's similar, you know, I have XML. I have all this data. I do not want all this. I just want some particular, you know, key value pairs. Uh, I can use parse XML and get those extracted. Um, I put a bunch of uh, print statement with date time because all of these collections uh, will, you know, starts with the date time column. Uh, so if you want to present your date time in a different way, you want to parse it and whatnot. So I just, you know, put a couple of examples here. Uh, and then again, you know, like you can all kind of, you know, values from the date time column if you need this. Uh, I know if some of you are aware, you know, using with the, you know, using a data warehouse, uh, I'm sure you probably have a table, something similar for date time series, and then you can use it to, you know, to do a bunch of things. Uh, I'm going to take a detour here. Uh, just to show you that I showed you. I think a couple of charts. Uh, using the uh, Azure Data Studio. I just want to show it here again uh, that you know these are built in. Uh, you can use uh, render column chart, time chart. Uh, you can also do it from the portal I showed you a few times. Um, so again, you know, I think and, and there's also, um, you know, some feature I think is built in here that you can change your chart type and stuff. Uh, and if you do not want that, if you just want data, uh, you can just do this. It will give you your, um, you know, the data there. Um, so these are some of the examples. Uh, number three. This is these are also a little bit advanced aggregation. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with this. Uh, you can read those by yourself and uh, and you know just just run those and you'll see and I put for each one also each operator 
I also put URL for Microsoft documentation for everyone. So uh, if you want to read more, see more examples, uh, please go to these URLs and you will see it. Uh, this is a couple of examples, as I was saying, with the let. Uh, so again, as you know, we just saw that the event collection is not populated, so I'm not going to use this. But um, I have another one that uh, that you can um, you can run and see, declaring variables uh, and you know stepping through this. I'm not going to read this, but this one is a little bit interesting. So especially, um, let me get a little bit more real estate. So especially if you came from T-SQL background, we know that by default when you're joining two tables, you get a inner join, right? If you do not say what kind of join it is, and then of course you can do outer join, left outer join, uh, right outer join and whatnot. Uh, KQL by default does not do an inner join, and that was a surprise for me. So just to show you this, on the left side, just keep a note that I have twice April, right? So I'm doing a left table, right table. I didn't have to say that the join kind is inner unique because that's default. I just said it to make clear that this is doing a inner unique. So if I run this, we got five rows. We only got April once on the left side. If you do an inner join, which is default in T-SQL, or in SQL in general. See that I got April twice. OK. So just bear in mind if you are doing a join between two tables, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, just to show you another example, the power of, um, you know, let statement. So I'm looking at some CPU and memory data. I'm putting those into two different data set, and then I'm using both in the in the in the third one. I mean, it's not obvious always that you know. Uh, just for demo purpose, I'm looking at you know a correlation between CPU uh, and memory. Can can I uh, ask a question about that? Yes, go ahead. Great, thanks. Uh, uh, I uh, was waiting for an example, and I'm not sure this one is one that uses two tables. Oh, this is correlating across. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't read it fast enough the first time. I don't think my question quite applies here yet. Uh, uh, but these are both off the, we'll call it the perf table. Yeah, you probably, I think your question will lead to can we do across two? database and I'm talking database here very loose term metaphorically. Yeah, 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 that's possible. That's possible. Uh, I probably do not have an example here, uh, but um, I think if you go to that query explorer in plural site, probably in M7 or M8, you will see a bunch couple of example. Cool, thanks. I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, these are pretty. Uh, there's something still not available uh, in log analytics workspace, but I'm pretty confident that it will be coming soon. Uh, that is, if I'm querying the same data set over and over, right? Do I go to and fetch those every time? Um, so right now, this is available in Azure Data Explorer. Um, what you can do, so let me get out of this, come here. If you are using this as a service, you have this materialize function. Uh, you get, I think, par, um, I don't remember, uh, the cache size is a five gig, I know that, but there is a, I think it's par, uh, not log into work space. Um, I, I have to go through, I, I, I'm forgetting the right term. Uh, so it's, 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 you know, you get five gig. And uh, here if you see that I'm just giving it a name random set. And I'm going to put this data into this and then I'm using it three times. So it doesn't have to go back and fetch this data three times, right? You can 
it's a caching mechanism. So that's available. And as you can see, I did it three times. And if you go to this URL, there's uh, more examples. Uh, here, it is getting it from the storm event collection. And uh, you know it's going to do a count and summarize, and then it's putting it into the detailed data. And now it's, then you are using it, and then you are joining to itself, you know, to look at, uh, you know, some more data. So you you can do this. There are some some caching mechanisms uh, built in there. Um, I will commit to all of you that I do not uh, work with any of the machine learning stuff, uh, but some of you are probably doing it. So for you folks, uh, you probably know these algorithms. You know they're very common. Basket is one and auto cluster. And I think basket is, you know, we all know, you know, retail industry probably use it all the time, right? Uh, they're trying to find out, you know, what things they should put beside bread, what things they should put beside, you know, bread or egg or whatnot, right? During Christmas, they want to figure out, you know, what are the things they put it together? What are the things they put in the front? What in the back, right? They're always using this algorithm. So these algorithms are actually available using with Kustu query language without doing anything. Um, you just evaluate and then you, you know, give your uh, algorithm name. And if you have a threshold, you pass that. And I, again, as I said, um, you know, I copied this from this example, but uh, if you go to um, this URL, uh, you know, there are um, other ones that you can read. Uh, what are the uh, algorithms they, you know, is allowed as of today? Um, so you, you can just use those as, as is. So if you can see this one, uh, you know, these are a couple of, uh, you know, security events. Uh, if you want to see that, you know, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, event ID you are getting and you know how frequently you are getting, what percent of this of your total. And if you change this number, um, uh, you know, you, you, you're, the weight of your groupings are going to change. As you see now, we shrinked it, right? Uh, if you want to go, you know, see like more smaller buckets, uh, you change this. Um, now you're going to, you know, see a larger uh, result set. Uh, again, like, you know, just as an example, this is, telling me about my patching, uh, you know, how much in compliance, what are installed, what not. And if I want to say, no, this is, you know, a very high level, I want to give me more granular, uh, you can change that and you can see those. Um, I do not use this, I'll be honest with you. I just thought I'm going to mention it in case if some of you are uh, using this machine learning algorithms. Uh, so the last thing, can you export this data? Right, because uh, for whatever reason, right, you might need that. Uh, so if I run this, mm -mm. sorry, I should have used this. Now I have this data. I can uh, come here. I can save it, export to CSV. Um, I can do a bunch of stuff. So if you are into Power BI, I will just show you something. This will be the last demo. And before, you know, when I gave this talk last time, actually, um, you had to do this query to Power BI. And then what you would do, I have to go and get a advanced, you know, data source and paste all this, right? It comes with your source, your 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 cluster name, and all that. And luckily, you do not have to do that anymore. So, Power BI now have a connector for this. Um, Hopefully, help. Uh, 
Oh, I should have given the query. I did not. Okay. Uh, let me go and get my queries with storm events. You can bring you know all the data. You can write your query. Uh, you can filter it. Uh, you know I'm again I'm not a Power BI person, uh, but I just thought you know I'm just going to mention it in case if some of you are working on. Uh, you can now directly bring this data and then you know build your dashboard, uh, share it, send the links to people, uh, whatever you need to do. Uh, so that's all I have uh, before I. Go back to my slide. Let me just show you one more thing. Because I mentioned this few times. Uh, and I can send this to. Uh, no, this is not my account. Just give me a minute. I just want to show you where the where you can find everything and I, I can definitely send this to uh, Veronica, Bill and uh, Jason uh, if they want to you know, put it somewhere or send you another email with this, so, but. I did refresh this just two hours ago, as you can see. So everything is here. So if you just go, you know, SQL Worldwide and then presentation under this, uh, download, play with it. You don't need to ask me, you know, whatever you need to do, feel free. Uh, so that's it. So I do not have anything else. I'm just going to bring up my. I'm just going to bring up my contact page again in case if anyone. Yeah, so that's all I have. Um, you know, let me know if you have any question comments. Um, if you, you know, when you download stuff, if you can, you know, if you think of anything, uh, just send me a note. And as I said, you know, if I do not know the answer, I'll try to find it for you. Uh, just keep an eye on the Azure Data uh, in Azure Data Studio. There's going to be a bunch of um, KQL extension is going to, uh, I think, expand. There's going to be a lot of, uh, uh, you know, good work is being done. Hopefully, one day we can just directly connect to Log Analytics Workspace without all these hoops, and uh, you know, pull down data and do visualization there. So, So uh, that was uh, fantastic, Kayab. Uh, does anybody have any questions they'd like to lob at him before we wrap this up? Okay, well, I guess everything was 100% crystal clear to everybody, <laughs> as, as usual. Uh, uh, that that was great. And, and um, you, do the, uh, you do a fantastic job of just Making it so easy to continue the the quest after you leave because the the rich set of resources is you know just so uh, well thought out and complete. So appreciate that you launched us all. Any of us who want to dig in further into uh, Custo, made it easy. Uh, uh, last last uh, last chance for a uh, for a question. You can come off mute if you like, or you can uh, text it. Uh, well, uh, we'll wait a few seconds in case that happens. I'll, I'll mention uh, that two, not two weeks from tonight, um, uh, about almost four weeks from tonight. Uh, on Tuesday, today's Thursday, the next meeting is on a Tuesday, February 23rd. Uh, we have uh, how does uh, Azure, Azure Cosmos DB work under the hood? Uh, Hassan uh, Savran will be our uh, guest uh, speaker there. So that's the next one to sign up. Uh, and we have a number of other ones coming online after that. As always, follow 
us on um, you know on Meetup, and you 